Well, okay, no, wait, wait, wait. There's one thing that actually happened that I don't understand, but we should at least put this marker in here because maybe you guys have uh, insight that uh, I do not. There was some type of leak, and this people were telling me about that on my live stream this morning when I was, was teaching Pathfinder, but I couldn't find it because there was some type of leak of 2.0 FAQ material, which puts out this idea of 2.0 out there, but it's not a public leak. So that wasn't, we can't just go download it. So, I mean, I don't, I don't have access to it. It wasn't leaked to me. Uh, which is fine, but I was trying. Like, there's a leak. I can't find it. Oh, you you can't find it. It was sent to some people. So some people were talking about FAQ that references 2.0. Do you guys know more information about that or understand how it relates to all of this? I, I saw it, but I don't know its provenance, so I can't. I don't want to speculate about it. I don't. I, I don't know if it's real or not. Yep. Same. Okay. So as a marker on the timeline, that happened, and there were some streams that were talking about it. So, but yeah, I don't. I don't personally have any information on that either. Or that's so, okay. So then that happened, but then it was quickly overshadowed by the release of uh, the Watsi statement. Yeah. And I, I will say that in that leak, they did refer to it as Open Gaming License 2.0 for the first time. It was it was originally being discussed as a 1.1 release. And then when the Wizards put out their statement today, they referred to it as 2.0 as well. Oh, oh, that's a good point. So the, the, in the statement, it's 2.0? Yes, Part of that probably has to do with, I was saying that search engines, if people are looking for what's 1.1 or something like that, we need a different name for this so that people, oh, it's not that, it's, this is something different. Yeah, there was some controversy around 1.1, but now this is 2.0. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this, oh, uh, this right here is the statement. <laughs> So I guess, you know, we were a lot of people were saying, well, when are they going to put something out? If they didn't, if there was the non-statement, there was nothing. And this is a holiday weekend coming up. Well, I guess you could put together this blog post as a statement yeah. in, like all night. OK, I guess you could do that if, if it were true, if it were true, which is speculation that they were going to announce uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. Perhaps if they didn't for whatever reason and they needed to announce something else. Well, all right. I guess they could do this. Yeah. So it says. When we initially conceived of revising the OGL, it was with three major goals in mind. First, we wanted, to wanted the ability to prevent the use of D&D &D content from being included in hateful and discriminatory products. That statement makes me so angry. Okay. Like, up to this Take point, it. I have kind of felt like this is a philosophical argument about how things should work and a legal argument about whether or not a license can be deauthorized uh, and revoked or not. That statement to me is patently offensive. It, it doesn't even matter if it's true or not because it wasn't true when they started. If this was something they wanted to make as their first thing, it would have been in the first communication they made when they did the first post about doing this. They're adding this. It's This is the worst kind of trying to wrap themselves in the values of the struggle for human decency. And it's shameful. And they should be called out for this statement. This is shameful. Yeah. I mean, it, it's sort of like trying to say, don't get mad at us. We were trying to be righteous. Yeah. Don't Even get mad if at it's true, it doesn't thing. matter. Because you didn't say it until after the firestorm started. Yeah. And as we've pointed out as well, it's not even something that's true because they still control the D&D &D trademark. They still have perfect control over what the, because the, they say D&D &D content here. Yes. They, 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 they use D and D interchangeably with things licensed with the open gaming license in a very, in a way that may, leads me to believe they don't really understand how the license works. Whoever wrote this doesn't understand how the license works. Well, there's lots more of that later. I'm sure we'll get to it. <laughs> yeah, they either don't understand how the license works, or they're trying to be deliberately obtuse yes. or whatever I, I, that word I, is. Deliberately obscure. Really, really hard to offer them grace and assume they're not doing it on purpose. Right, and we don't know, but those are two <laughs> options. Those are two right. options. Yeah. Second, we wanted to address those attempting to use D and D in Web three blockchain games and NFTs by making clear that OGL content is limited to tabletop role playing content like campaigns, modules, and supplements. Yeah. Well, the first thing they don't have to do because it's not you can't use D and D in any of those things anyway with the current version, version one point a of the OGL. So that is fake news that is uh that is cl that is claiming harm that does not exist and then the same the second thing which is that the ogf the ogl is only to be used for role-playing content like campaigns modules and supplements is not true even in the text of the license it doesn't say that anywhere because it's not true the ogl can be used for anything it's not limited to some 
specific kinds of content. It was never intended to be limited, and it isn't limited. And third, we wanted to ensure that the OGL is for the content creator, the home brewer, the aspiring designer, our players, and the community, not major corporations to use for their own commercial and promotional purposes. And here they actually do specifically say OGL. Yeah. Well, tough. Like 22 years ago when D&D was dying, a deal was made. And that deal helped save Dungeons & Dragons. And I can make the argument that it saved it twice, actually. It saved it in 2000 and it saved it in 4th edition. So, yeah, you made a deal and you need to live up to it. And if that means that some other people make money, they that's the deal. Like, that was always the intention, that people would be able to make money from this. It's a commercial license. It licenses copyright rights. That's what it's for. It's okay. Like, you're not making any less money. Your brand value has grown every single year since 2000. And now it is a number with probably six or seven extra digits in it. Like, it's ridiculous. Because of this. Right. Because of this. That's why. Because of this. Exactly. <laughs> right. And- and, and it, 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 of course, I mean, all of this kind of I mean, flew in my face. I mean, because like we're, this is the first three sentences, and we already have these major problems with the first three sentences with exactly what the statement is. Yeah. You know, but, it, it's so frustrating because they could have just been honest. They could have just said, we're changing our strategy. We envision a digital future. We want to own that future. We want to manage that platform ourselves. And we're changing the licensing terms to get there, which is true. But they didn't say that. They said three untru- They said three untrue things in the hopes that that will give them cover for what they're trying to do. And yeah, I, I got to say, I mean, one of the things we're trying to do is stay positive on building something, right? And in our cool name, RP, our cool name goes here. We we're like, God, we just want to try to, at least from our perspective, stay positive. But with stuff like this, it's tough. It's tough yep. to to not be frustrated and angry and, you know, want to just like lash back at this stuff. Because, yeah, it's yep. it just feels like they don't think that we recognize what's really going on. And we're gamers, yep. We always look for hidden meaning and messages. It's how our characters survive most games because the game master tries to trick us with exactly this sort of thing. <laughs> now, we, we, said it, we said at the top of the show, I said at the top of the show, one of the yeah. things that's happening is movement. Wizards of the Coast is moving. They are moving in the right direction. And the rest of what we're going to talk about is that movement. So that's the bad stuff. It's over with. Now we're going to talk yeah. about things that start to get better. <laughs> Right. But I want to say that I don't like that he says, you know, for the home brewer. Well, we all start as home brewers, you know, and then or almost all of us when we're designed to home brewing something. And then, OK, we're an aspiring designer. Hey, let's take this beyond the home brew and let's become an aspiring designer. And then what if you get it published and then you become successful, which is what the OGL right. allowed and wanted and, right. and all of that. Right. But if you go from home brewer to aspiring designer and then all of a sudden you're successful with everything you've designed and you become a major corporation with a commercial and promotion, you're all of a sudden the enemy. Yeah. That's not the philosophy the, of the OGL. What's a major corporation? Hasbro's market value, it's like $3 billion. <laughs> what's a major? Somebody with $750,000 in revenue is not a major corporation. <laughs> I mean, it's just nuts. They're, they're not even big enough to get venture capital funds at that size. Yeah. If you want to start talking it's, about what major is, it's yeah. that's Mattel not. Mattel is not using the open gaming license, although they certainly could. Like, that's a major corporation. Sony's a major corporation. Microsoft's a major corporation. Those are major corporations. The people they're talking about are not, quote, unquote, major corporations. And, and it's it's all, that's another part of this. It's all punch. It's them punching down. We all perceive it's them punching down. Right? It's not like them punching up at Microsoft. Absolutely. It's yep. them that's punching down. Yep. And it feels like I've been punched. To be honest, I think that's just <laughs> hard. It does, because it's kind of like, look, I took money that I could have been saving for other things, and I put it into this dream based yep. on the OGL. I recognized, you know, people are like, well, you should have known. Well, yeah, we did. We took that risk. But yep. from a business perspective, 22 years Without yeah. a single rumble, suggest yeah, this it is a seem very risky. Risk, yeah. Right. And so, so when they do this, absolutely, they basically punched my dream in the gut and told me to throw away what I spent two decades where I get upset about this because this is, I don't know how they, anyway. <laughs> well, well, it does, yeah, I agree. Right. It feels the same way to me. It feels like all of a sudden, wait a minute, after this, that I'm the enemy. Like after yeah, like, running the company and the publishing stuff, wait, it turns out I'm the enemy of, of the, the whole operation here what yeah Yeah. yep okay so driving these goals were two simple principles one our job is to be good stewards of the game and two 
The OGL exists for the benefit of the fans. Nothing about those principles has wavered for a second. Take it. I have no objection to any part of that paragraph. <laughs> well, I don't believe the first sentence is true, but I do believe in number one and number two. <laughs> okay. Because they do say that they that you know we should all be good stewards of the game. Right. We should. Right. We should. Absolutely. Whether, whether or not that was their ultimate goal. Our fathers, we need to give it to our descendants. We have an obligation to be good stewards. Uh, and of course, it does say the OGL benefits benefit the fan. It doesn't say only the fan. You know, it's just, but yes, yeah. the fans definitely it exists for their Absolutely. benefit. Now, but Absolutely. whether or not that was actually the motivation of what they were doing, right. that's the question. Yeah, that's why our early drafts of the new OGL included the provisions that they did. Which, as Mark and I went through, we, Mark and I went through the whole thing on a live stream, and we're like, we didn't feel that. <laughs> we didn't feel that. that well, we I mean, since they've never formally published early drafts of the OGL, I don't really want to speculate on what was in them because we don't really know. Okay. The draft language pr was provided to content creators and publishers, so feedback could be considered before anything was finalized. And boy, did they get some! They got some feedback. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, because I need some something joyful, someone asked if we can read this like Darth Vader. Um, that draft language was provided to content creators and publishers so their feedback could be considered before anything was finalized. There you go. That, that, that's good. good. I, you know, I didn't think about that. I did the, uh, the, the dramatic <laughs> reading of Paizo's thing, but I didn't think about like an evil overlord reading of this one. <laughs> um. So in addition to the language allowing us to address discriminatory, discriminatory and hateful conduct and clarifying what types of products the OGL covers, our drafts included royalty language designed to apply to large corporations, large corporations, which we just yeah. addressed, attempting to use OGL content. It was never our intent to impact the vast majority of the community. They impact Except, everyone. of course, that by definition, any successful company has created a large portion of the pop of the community. So you're affecting them. If you're affecting the corporations that sell them products, you're affecting the large majorities of the community. <laughs> right. Yeah. If you, if, if you're affecting Paizo, if you affect a Kobold press, especially, yeah. you know, like yeah. you're affecting everybody yeah. who buys and loves their products. Yeah, exactly. However, it's clear from the reaction that we rolled a one. Well, that's certainly true. Yeah. Boy, did they ever. It has yeah. become clear that it is no longer possible to fully achieve all three goals while staying true to our principles. Pretty Which interesting, huh? Really... Like I'm they're sorry, willing to compromise their goals at this point. Like, really? If they were really your goals, like if it really mattered to you, would you ever compromise? Apparently they will. They are compromising. They're willing to move. So, so I have to say that as a gamer, to say that we rolled a one... It's cute that they're trying to use D and D terminology, but there was no chance involved here. They made very yeah. specific decisions throughout this process. Yeah. This is more like when your players do something really dumb, not when they roll badly. This is this wasn't bad luck, right? Yeah, yeah. That's excellent right. point. It wasn't I, I'd use that terminology too, but that's an excellent point. Okay, the next OGL will contain the provisions that allow us to protect and cultivate the inclusive environment we are trying to build and specify that it covers only content for tabletop role-playing games. And I, I get, this is a weird sentence to me, but it says, that means that other expressions such as educational and charitable campaigns, live streams, cosplays, VTT uses, etc., will me remain unaffected by any OGL update. Content already released under 1.0a will also remain unaffected. There is a lot there to say. Uh, let's uh, so let, let's start with this part. Trying to, so that we will say uh, let's start with this point. Protect and cultivate the inclusive environment we are trying to build, and specify that it only covers content for tabletop role playing games. If they wanted to do something completely new for sixth edition and a license that only covers that, fine. But that's not what yep. the OGL does. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Uh, so, but then this is this is weird language. This other expressions because they say that's only going yeah. to cover that it only covers content for other tabletop games. But then they say that means that other expressions, such as educational and charitable campaigns, live streams, cosplay, VTT uses, etc., will remain unaffected by any OGL update. To me, those are like they're I, 
there, there's something weird about this language here to me. It seems like I would have said something like if I were being straight here, and maybe they are, maybe it's just awkward wording, you know, with the intention, but it covers that this covers only content for tabletop games, including educational and charitable campaigns, live streams, cosplay, VTT uses, etc. Wouldn't that be a more direct, I mean, that would be better language? I mean, it's, it. I, I think what it is is a punch list of people who made objections to what they're trying to do. They don't have any good defense for why they want to change those people's lives. And so they've just said, oh, don't worry, we're not going to affect you. Like, stop complaining. Stop. Get off the air. Stop telling your fans that we're doing a bad thing. We're not going to touch you. Of course, they, they can't say that because there is no way to modify the license like they're talking about. It can't be done. They can't change the words of 1.0a. They can't. It's it's That's not possible. They can, they can argue they have the right to deauthorize and revoke it, which they do not have. But they can't change it. They can make a new license, which no one will use. But they can't change the 1.0 license. To, to me, it, yeah, to, it, yes, and but to, it, to me here, I was. It seems like they're also they're trying to have it both ways. And since well, this is for tabletop RPGs, but then there are other things that are outside okay. tabletop RPGs, right? Which that apparently are okay. a lot like within tabletop RPGs to me yeah. that they're right. separate. Yeah, it's super hard to parse. I mean, this gets back to the very genesis of the whole project in the first place. We would never have tried to figure out how to tell you what you could and couldn't license uh, with a copyright license. Because it's impossible to imagine all the things you could potentially do with it. Like yeah. the live stream thing is a great example. If I do a live stream of somebody playing a copy, a, a, a version of Dungeons and Dragons, is that a derivative work of the game Dungeons and Dragons? Some people might ant might say yes. Some people might say no. In fact, as far as I know, virtually nobody who does a live stream uses the open gaming license anyway. So they're just going to rely on on copyright law as it is. They're not they're not attempting to get into the open gaming environment with their content. They don't need a license, apparently. They don't think they do. As far as I know, no one uses one. So if they want to publish a book based on the game that they do in their live stream, they feel like they need to use the open gaming license. But they don't feel like they need to use it to do the live stream. They or might. Cosplay. They don't feel like they have to. This, before we go to this next sentence, there. this seems like a good place to bring this up. There was this word pantomime in the leak. Do you have any idea, Ryan, what that might be yeah. referring to? Yeah, it's a thing in Europe. It's mostly in the United Kingdom. Uh, Panto uh, is a is a giant cultural phenomenon. It usually happens around Christmas. Uh, weirdly, David Hasselhoff is one of the biggest stars in pantomime, um, and it's ancient. It, it 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 goes back to like the Middle Ages. Um, so I'm guessing that somewhere in the UK, somebody did a D and D pantomime thing, and so they had to put that word in, or they thought they should, or somebody on that group is from the UK and knows about it and thought it should be there. I don't know, but that's what it is. Oh, okay. Well, okay, so they're, they're, it's, we were wondering, because we knew what pantomime was, but I was wondering yeah. who is exactly doing pantomime, because I was like, I don't know any D&D &D pantomimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, gotta, yeah, I just, maybe want to go look it up. I was like, who's the big pantomime D&D? &D? Yeah, Did yeah. you hear anything, though, about someone said that some uh, American Sign Language interpretations involve oh, okay. a actually acting things out and thus sure. would be considered pantomime? That's one of the things oh, that I read theory. somewhere, someone saying. So, sure. One of great my theory. favorite. Could, could even be right. <laughs> well, one of my favorite theories that came up in the chat on one of the other live streams I was that they might be thinking about TikTok, that, you know, the movements on TikTok doing stuff. I was like, oh, they could be Maybe. like pantomime and TikTok. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> okay. okay. But then it right, says right. content and I have a huge problem. Which is probably the most important sentence, sentence in the entire thing. Yeah. Th yeah. This is huge. So this will take a lot. Yeah. Content already released under the 1.0a will also remain unaffected. Take it, Ryan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, unaffected is not a legal term. It doesn't mean anything. Either the license is unrevoked and not deauthorized, in which case nothing has changed, and it is just like the world was a month ago. They have published 3rd, 3.5, and 5th edition, among other things, using the Open Gaming License 1.0a. And if this statement was interpreted correctly, which is unaffected means nothing has changed, then you could continue to publish games and game content using the content that Wizards of the Coast has already published using the 1.0 version of the OGL forever. The license is perpetual. It never ends. So either they are saying in this sentence, we give up. We're effectively agreeing that the license cannot be revoked and we will not attempt to deauthorize it. Or they are saying something that is impossible, that they can somehow grant rights to this material by somehow 
altering the terms of the deal, which is not permitted under the terms of the deal. Like they, it's binary. It's one or the other. But unaffected doesn't mean anything. It's not a word that means anything in a courtroom. It, it seems to me like it's, it's trying to set up some type of situation of like saying, oh, don't worry, you're grandfathered in. That yes. If you or like all those books you have on your shelf, we're not going to order you to destroy them. Yes. That, what they probably meant to say was we're not going to pursue anybody for infringement for any work published under the Open Gaming License 1.0a that has a publication date of June 30th, 2023. That would have been a statement that would at least be legal. But this statement is not legal in any way. But it does imply that they intend to leave the license unrevoked and 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 authorized. I don't think that was their intention, but that's what it implies. Con content already released, but then the other point is the content that will be released because you will still be able to you will still be able to release content. That's what I we're mean, that's what the open game license is. It's a license for the future. If it's unaffected, it means the license remains in effect. All right. So then it also says what it will not contain is any royalty <laughs> structure. Yeah. And somebody just hey. lost their mind, probably. <laughs> somebody just lost their mind? What? Oh, oh you're talking about with Ed Watsy? Yeah. Good job. Good job. I mean, somebody has inflicted massive pain on the organization to get money, and now they say they're not going to take any. That's got to be really bad for your job prospects. But, all right, so we got that. But it says it also will not include the license back provision that some people were afraid was a means for us to steal work. Yeah. Which it certainly seemed like. It was It was absolutely possible. And, and they, of course, knew that. Whether or not they wanted to say that or not is irrelevant. There were people drafting that license or people who wrote that language, and we haven't seen that language from them. All we've seen are leaks, which we don't know are true or not. But if that language is in the license, they knew they could use it for that. They, they're not surprised by that. That's something they knew. Well, well, they say that thought never crossed our minds. Yeah, well, that's just lies. I mean, okay, no, some no. minds might have never crossed, but not the mind of the person who wrote the language. I also would like, in case anyone from Watts or Hasbro listens to this, I want to be really clear about something. Throughout this, they keep saying afraid and scared. Yeah. We're neither afraid nor <laughs> scared. That's right. We are really, really pissed off. The small yeah. developers are not afraid. We're angry. And there's yeah. a big difference. It, the uh, whole community is angry. It's not just the publishers. It's the people yeah. are angry. Yeah. Outrage. Yeah. 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 And, and, but, you know, that, there were so many things when Mark and I went through that leak that we were like, well, we would never publish under that license for this reason. We would never yeah, publish. If there was one thing in there, it would be like, no, it was like just, just hard nose all the way through it. Yeah. And that yeah. was one of many. Yeah, it was tragic. And, yeah. And I was like, nobody I know who was trying to create worlds and fantasy worlds and sci-fi worlds would ever have published anything under that license. Yeah. But it says, under the new OGL, you will own the content you create. We no won't. Change. No change. That's true now. That's true now, and it was also true. See, any language we put in will be put put down will be crystal clear and unequivocal on that point. Now, but see, as has been pointed out on another stream, which is a great point, that in that leak, it was also clear that you owned it. But as many people point out, ownership is a bundle of rights, and so you can still mm -hmm. technically own it. Oh, you you are the owner. We are crystal clear. You are the owner. You just have no rights to do anything with it. Yeah, or we have the rights well, to do things with it. Yeah. that are unilateral. They're not reciprocal. We don't have to give them to anybody else and we don't have to give anything back to you, but we can use your stuff any way we want to. That's a pretty common thing people try to put into contracts. The license back language was intended to protect us and our partners from creators who incorrectly allege that we steal their work simply because of coincidental similar similarities. Okay. <laughs> I mean, okay, I know that that is a concern. That you know that in licensing, and that's why sometimes people say, "Do not send me anything." Like you know, if people, you know, if you're trying to get you a know, publisher or something like that, you know, do not send something to me. I don't even want to look at it because of potential issues like that. Because it does say, as we continue to invest in the game we love and move forward with partnerships in film, television, and digital games, the big things we've been saying are what they're trying to make the Dungeons and Dragons brand. Yeah. That risk is simply too great to ignore. So great, they were willing, basically, destruction of the D and D community over it. Yeah. The new OGL will contain provisions to address that risk, but we do it without a license back and without suggesting we have the rights to the content you create. 
Well, we'll see. We'll read it. We'll see what it is. We're sure. still not published under it, but yeah. okay. Your ideas and imagination are what makes this game special, and that belongs to you. Also true. Yes, <laughs> right. it is. Yes, we're aware. <laughs> A couple of last thoughts. First, we won't be able to release the new OGL today <laughs> because we need to make sure we get it right, but it is coming. No date given here. Second, yeah. you're going to hear people's th this, this statement. Second, yeah. you're going to hear people yeah. say that they won and we <laughs> lost because making our voices heard forced us to change our plans. Those people will be only half right. They won and so did we. Yeah. True statement, by the way. They did win from this. If they are forced to back down and to publicly say that they cannot deauthorize or revoke that license, they will win. It's good for them. And the best part is that we don't want to win. We just want to publish our books. Yeah. Right? I, I, I don't want a trophy. I don't want to be top of the heap. I don't want to dethrone Wizards of the Coast. I'm not looking to win anything. I'm just looking to be able to do cool, creative stuff and get people to buy more WotC books. But apparently that's not, yeah, in the cards. <laughs> Uh, Stray in the comments this morning used the term narcissistic, and I, I, but that's that's how it felt to me that like if I look at what happened to Wizards of the Coast over the past week, there's no way I could describe that as winning. That that they felt you know that they have won, and that it's be like, hey, you know what, we've won too. That that's but so I think weird. what it does is it sort of tells us uh, what it tells me reading into it, and it's just speculation, but it tells me that someone is looking to win. Yes. And that's, that's the point, right? Is that it's telling us that from their perspective, yep. there's going to be a winner and there's going to be a loser in this. And their goal is to win when all of apparently, us are just like, we're role players. You don't win the game. There's two winners, <laughs> us and them. Yeah. But there is no us and them, by the way. There's just one big community all using the same license. Yeah. We're all winning. Yeah. Uh, we are, okay, so we're getting, okay, we're getting, we got one more paragraph here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another marker in the chat for a QA. and a Questions Q and A. So on this section, so I put another marker in the chat. So if you have a, a question, good question. We can't take all questions, but if you have questions, I'll look for this marker in the chat. I just put questions Q and A, and uh, we'll start there. So the the final paragraph here says, and there's problems here. Too. I mean, there's problems throughout this. This is why it's just not an acceptable statement. It was not an acceptable statement because it didn't say that we were not going to revoke and deauthorize the, that that core part. The OG that was the core part that made this unacceptable. But everything yeah. else that was written here is also unacceptable. So it's just like what our plan was always to solicit the input of our community before any update to the OGL. The drafts you've seen were attempting to do just that. False. They were leaked. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, if they wanted, if they wanted to solicit the, I mean, you know, maybe they intended to put put this up on a blog post later. Maybe there's yeah. no way of knowing. We don't know what's in their head. It doesn't matter now. But the drafts that we saw were leaks that were not being shown to the community. If they wanted to solicit yeah. the input of the community, they could have put that document have. out as a blog post right here. Yeah. They have an enormous platform. They could have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do have the means to do that. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, I do not believe that for a second. We want to always delight fans and create experiences together that everybody loves. Well, okay, probably true. Right. We, we realize all... we did not... What? <laughs> all in favor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we and we all want to do that. Yeah. But we realize we did not do this this time, and we're sorry for that. Well, that's good. Our goal was to get exactly the... Our goal was to get exactly the type of feedback on what provisions worked and what did not, which we ultimately got for you? Yeah, it's phony. I don't, yeah, no, no way. If that was their goal, it would have been on this blog. Yeah. Well, if, if that was their goal, it would have been part of the one d d surveys that we've been answering every month or so already, right? I mean, and it wasn't. Uh, any change this major could only have been done if we were willing to take that feedback, no matter how it was provided, so we are. I think they're they, it seems like they it seems like they were trying to make this change without feedback. Like yeah. this was something that was just gonna drop. I mean, there's Absolutely. I do not believe this. Yep. Thank you for caring enough to let us know what works and what doesn't and what you need and what there's that word scares you. What scares yeah. you? How yeah, about yeah, just yeah. what makes you absolutely infuriated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> without knowing that, we can't do our part to make the new OGL match our principles. Finally, we'd appreciate the chance to make this right. We love D&D's devoted players and creators who take them on so many incredible adventures. We won't let you down. 
Yeah, well, look, I'm happy to take them up on their offer. Make it right. Make a public statement that you will not deauthorize or revoke 1.0a of the license. That's how you make it right. It's very simple. We saw Paizo yeah. make a statement. We're saying it's a very simple statement. It is That is what you need to say. That is what we all want to see. That's what the community needs to see. Yep. And it is a simple statement to make. And then go forward and do whatever you want with open 1 D&D or 6th edition and yep. uh, make it as great as you possibly can. So then everybody wants to go play it. Just do that. Yeah. I, mean, I think in that last paragraph, they talked a whole lot about getting feedback from the community and knowing what people liked and didn't like and, and finding out what the problems were. And they still haven't published a draft. They haven't. All of the drafts that you've seen are leaks. You don't know that they're real. They probably are real, but we don't know that they're real. They're not getting feedback on anything. Uh, you're right. I mean, that's a great point. If they really, if that, when they're talking about wanting uh, the feedback, this was not published with any type of, yeah, I mean. Yeah. They could yeah, publish it right now and say, this is a draft. We'd like your feedback, but they haven't done that. Yeah. And, uh, and obviously they don't want feedback because they know that that license is awful. <laughs> 